CEO of Forrester Research based in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And we are a research company that does uh, research all over the world on technology, and we also gather data on technology and consumers. And I'm very happy that the World Economic Forum has invited me to be your host this morning. Our topic is digital in Asia, and it is a very, very large topic. Um, we could maybe go all morning on this topic, um, but we will try and address this in approximately one hour. I think you all know, we all understand that digital is becoming a critical element and component of every nation's economy and a critical component of the world economy. Um, I'll make a statement which you may not agree with, but I don't believe any nation can actually move forward unless it is truly advanced in digital. So we will talk uh, about consumers, we'll talk about large companies and how they manage technology. We will talk about the changes coming in communications, and uh, we'll have a very interesting uh, one hour for you. Now, I'm going to give you a warning that uh, I'm going to introduce everyone in a moment, but after I introduce everyone, I'm going to ask the audience what you want to learn today. So prepare that question, and I'll come back to you in a moment. But I want to introduce our panelists. Uh, to my left is... Uh, Zheng Zhao Wang, and he is the chairman of China Mobile. Uh, he is the, uh, running the largest uh, mobile company in the world with 600 million subscribers. So thank you for being here. Appreciate it. And uh, sitting to his left is Tetsuo uh, Yamakawa, and Tetsuo is the vice minister for policy coordination in the ministry, in the ministry of Internal Affairs and Communications in Japan. And his background is in broadcasting. Thank you for being here. Michelle Guthrie is head of strategy for Google in Asia. And uh, she told me that she used to work at News Corporation. Well, you were head of ethics, right? I'm just kidding. I'm CEO of Star, actually. Oh, you were? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you bailed at just the right time. Um, and then uh, to her left is Takeshi uh, Tatsuno, who's a professor at Keio University but you probably know him better because he was at Docomo and he was the inventor of iMode at Docomo. And then finally, uh, uh, Suhas, uh, Suhas uh, Gopanath is the CEO uh, and chairman of Globals, an outsourcing company based in India, uh, which he started at the very old age of 14. And his, his, your parents gave you a bigger allowance and that allowed you to fund the corporation, I think. Uh, but it's great to have you here um, you. today. So those, these are our panelists. I'd like to now ask the audience, what do you want to learn in this one hour? We'll take just a few ideas out there. If there's microphones, anybody want to put their hand up? What do you want to learn today? Yeah, right here. <clears throat> Cho Chuan Tan from National University of Singapore. I'm particularly interested in balance. Uh, it seems quite clear that uh, digital technologies is going to transform um, the way we live, the way we operate businesses, uh, make it easier, faster, better. But uh, how do we manage the downsides in terms of security, confidentiality, and even maybe the impact it can have on social behavior and social norms? Thank Good. you. Excellent question. Thank you. Something else someone wants to learn here? Yeah. I <laughs> Cloud computing has great potentials and has already become a hot topic. And cloud computing is the direction of our application in terms of its combination with mobile technologies. What are the bottlenecks, including security, disaster recovery, etc.? And in this process, in terms of industry application and enterprise application, we seem to have a long way ahead. Thank you. Oh, uh, actually, uh, yeah, you're here. Yes, my name is uh, Wim Sweldon. So I'm with Alcatel And The question for the panel is, uh, do the panelists believe that Asia can really lead in the digital world? And if so, how many years would it take or what would be the time frame for Asia to become a leader in digital? Good question. One more, then we'll, then we'll, get, we'll get going here. Right here. There's maybe two more. Uh, hi, I'm Stephen Priestle representing Nivio, um, and he's a 
cloud computing business. And my question is about maturity of market. Uh, did the panel think it's the case that especially the developing part of Asia is actually at an advantage because it skipped <coughs> the early part of digital development and gone straight into 2.0 on social media? So it didn't have to go through the early stage, therefore it may be more advanced in the second stage. One last one right here. Right here. Thank you. Uh, my name is Chandra Naya. This is uh, not meant to be a trick question, but I'd like a definitive answer about what's the percentage of the internet that constitutes pornography and um, can the good guys at Google do something about it? What was the first part of the question? What part of the internet constitutes pornography? I've okay. had various answers about 60%, 70%. So I'm interested in what's the role of the state, but can the good guys at Google do something about it? I think it's algorithms. Okay, great question. Thank you very much. That, a great start for us. Um, so I want to now turn to the panelists, and um, I'm now going to do the, probably the smallest and least scientific survey ever of digital in Asia. And I'm going to ask each of our panelists what they personally use in digital. First question, and the second question is, what do you expect to be using in two years? Chinza, want to kick that off? What do you personally use in your home and with you, in, in work? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, myself, I have five devices for mobile phone. <laughs> you, you have five mobile phones? Five mobile phones. Right. But uh, it is my profession. I, I not only use mobile phones to get information, I use that to try our network quality. Right. So sometimes <laughs> when I'm uh, in the car... So do five uh, phones ring? Yeah, that's, I, I always make uh, the phones connected uh, to check the, yeah. the qualities. So okay. uh, I, I'm uh, ex exceptional. Right. Yeah. So we're having a race to see who's most connected here. He's in the lead. Uh, <laughs> Tetsuo. Okay. Well, uh, my background is uh, broadcasting, so I enjoy broadcasting every day. It's, uh, uh, well, uh, in Japan, we use the ISDBT mode, the digital broadcasting format, and it is very clear, and uh, we can uh, enjoy the very clear images and uh, uh, very good sound. And uh, actually, uh, we use Internet to, well, entertainment for uh, all kinds of entertainment we can use in the Internet, and I'm one of it. Okay, Michelle? Uh, well, n number one, it's my Android. <laughs> um, uh, you know, when, when we, uh, a few of us went out for dinner last night and, you know, it was, okay, where's the restaurant, uh, what's good to eat there, you know, so that we make sure that, that we order the right thing. Um, and then, you know, I'm, I'm um, uh, you know, pretty old-fashioned as well in, in just sort of having 14 years in television. So... So I'm, I'm probably the only mother that encourages her kids to watch television. Um, so, so, you know, I still, I still watch a lot of cable TV, particularly HD channels. I think, you know, the quality is extraordinary. Are you, are you reading fewer magazines and newspapers? Uh, no, no I, I, no, I do. I do read newspapers and magazines, um, and, and actually not, not on the phone um, or, or on a tablet. I'm very, you know, I travel a lot. Um, I'm based in Singapore but cover Asia. So normally, you know, I'll carry... You know, New Yorker magazine, sort of, you know, I, I save them up. Um, you, weekend FT and, and sort of take them on planes and then leave them behind. But so. you have a Chromebook, right? You have uh, a Chromebook. Yes, I do. I'm testing a Chromebook. And you have, a, you have an Apple device? I do. I have a MacBook as well, yeah. That's allowed at Google? Okay. That is allowed. Okay. That is allowed. Okay. Takeshi. Yes. All my secret is inside this phone. Right? <laughs> All so, my secret is inside this phone, right? Uh, when I access to the internet, I use email. And the all the you know hidden phone book is inside. And the, with my fingerprint authentication, you know, I can find out my girlfriend's name, but my wife cannot find out. Right? <laughs> so all my secrets is inside. So everything's in that phone. Yeah, and the, plus wallet. You know, I can pay money by this, and the, the home key, key to the, my house, is here. Right? <laughs> it's outside of the phone. You know, I, I couldn't develop a special <laughs> service like that. But the, everything is in my phone. And the recent you know, revolution in my life is iPad. Yeah, yeah. And by having a tablet, computer, you know, I decided not to take PC anymore. So everything is done by iPad 
and this phone. So your PC is gone, iPad yeah. only. Yeah, actually, I, I, I have PC, but in my house. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe. But not house. when you travel. Yeah. Okay. Sue so else? In my case, I mainly use smartphone and an iPad right now. So I used to use a PC aggressively, but uh, of course, uh, because of the purpose, especially to access a CRM system, so to access my mails, I'm quite comfortable with uh, tablet, PC, and a smartphone. So how many iPads up here? How many iPads? No? Okay. iPad? Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> By the way, when the, when the iPad was announced at Davos two years ago, that was in Switzerland, we all got together like this. We said, no, we'll never use that. We don't need that thing. We all had PCs. Why, who would ever use an iPad? Uh, just to show you how brilliant we were. Um, okay, let's go to our first question. Uh, let's move away from consumers. Thank you for introducing yourselves digitally to us. Um, so at Forrester, we spend lots of time with very large corporations. And we spend lots of time, time with CIOs and enterprise architects and large companies. The, the, the basic foundation of digital is how large organizations manage digital. That's large companies and also large uh, entities within the government. In the, in the U.S., we, we think, and we look at our research, we think that Europe is about two years behind the U.S., Europe is about two years behind the U.S. in managing technology, and Asia is about, is about three to four years behind in managing technology in large organizations. So, Suhas, you have a number of clients who are domestic in India, but you also have clients in Europe and the U.S. What do you think about that statement? Yeah, I feel, uh, look, I feel those CIOs in India are certainly, um, uh, look, I haven't got matured to those extent how it is in a Western country. So um, when we work with large and uh, even small and medium-sized enterprises, we've always seen that the CIOs uh, are mainly focusing on, on all those areas only when the management has taken an initiative. So like, we've seen that the like, majority of the Indian CIOs of small and medium-sized enterprises have not come up with their own initiatives. And, and it's very unfortunate that um, at times, in terms of the technology what's been adopted in the enterprises, it's still very obsolete. So like, actually it's high time that, uh, of course, in an emerging country like India, we start, we start upgrading the technology which has been adopted. So like, actually, I, find, like, I find it very hard to sell to the CIOs in India. Yeah, so CIOs have to rise up in India. They're, exactly. They're too, low, too low a level. Yeah. Any other comments about this topic? Michelle, I don't know if you deal with uh, yeah, you know, corporations. I, I think corporations. for us, I mean, you know, um, one, one of the, the issues that we see across Asia is really the importance of, of SMEs. I mean, you know, small and medium-sized businesses across Asia really drive so much economic growth and economic activity. And, you know, the, it, it, actually McKinsey came out with a, with a study sort of maybe a year or, or two ago that surveyed about 5,000 uh, SMEs. And essentially those ones that have a web presence have, you know, two times the, the sort of, you know, um, the share of revenue from exports, you know, twice the level of kind of, you know, jobs created. And they grow, t you know, twice as, as strongly as those that don't have a web presence. So, you know, I think that... that Increasingly, sort of SMEs are, are kind of, you know, leading some of the way in, in terms of really getting at that web presence. Will Will they have the ability to manage the technology well? That's well, the question. You know, I, that's why that, that's why the cloud's important, right? Yeah. I mean, I think that that, you know, in order to scale the ability to to, um, you know, have have digital, you know, services be accessible by SMEs. It, it doesn't make sense to have your own IT person, your own data centre. It just doesn't. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the take-up of, of cloud services is really sort of, you know, a key component of, of SMEs really being able to take advantage so, of... So, we might, so there, there was a question, which is a good one, which said, maybe Asia gets to skip over the old stuff and go right to the new stuff. That new stuff could be cloud. A absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, and, and, and mobile. Yeah. Um, you know, the, it, it, you know I, I spend a lot of time in Indonesia, and you know, you're not going to have 
fiber to the home in Indonesia. You just not, yeah. um, and you don't need it. Yeah. Um, essentially, the the level of of you know d uh, data sort of usage on mobile is extraordinary, and they really haven't rolled out 3G yet. Yeah. Um, and people are accessing it through feature phones. Mm -hmm. So you can see that there's tremendous demand, but people are are figuring it out based on the existing level of of technology and making it work. Yeah. So Jin Zhao, um, if you look at the CIO of China Mobile. Is that CIO a powerful CIO, powerful executive at the company? Uh, yes, I'm part. We, <laughs> we think we are an IT company, a telecom operator. So CIO become very, more important than others. And it reminds me another issues. Uh, you know, digital technology has changed the way we live, changed the way we work, and even changed the way we operate the business. Mm -hmm. And when it, not only the people don't know how to do that, and uh, even it, it uh, confused uh, the, the company itself. So some people say it is a hyper-connected world. I don't think so. Yeah. I, I don't think we overuse digital technology. And what is the problem? The problem is we need to change ourselves for our operation. Uh, for example, there are many new things we have to face, the convergence and the management and the protection of privacy. So we will give those people more rights, more responsibility to do yeah. that. So you see the CIO is rising, at least in your organization. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. True. Any other thoughts on this, on the CIO and internal management of technology? Any other thoughts? Uh, one thing I can say is, you know, in Asia, liquidity of CIOs or top management are less than U.S. Right? Yeah, yeah. So um, in the evolution speed of technology is so high, and if CIO stays more than 10 years in the same company, you know, his mindset would be delayed. Yeah, yeah. Right? And, and that's why, you know, in the U.S. companies, you know, CIOs are very changing their jobs very rapidly, right? And they're trying to bring new things always. So uh, that's a kind of a difference, I believe. And, yeah. the, you know, uh, it, I, I think this is a kind of a digital divide between consumers and the industry side. The industry yeah. side is always behind in yeah. Asian countries. So we might agree that then Asia is behind in, the techno in technology management. Someone brought up the question of bottlenecks here. So perhaps that's a bottleneck for Asia that the management of technology in companies, yes. in large corporations, yeah. and perhaps in government. Um, so attached to, the, uh, connected to this issue of technology management is the leadership of companies and organizations, the CEOs. Now, the, the top 100 companies in the world, the average age of the CEO is 59. So that person went to college or university without a computer. <laughs> they had a typewriter. Um, and they had something called whiteout, which I won't get into. Um, but, uh, so they did not use computers as, as kids. But last year, we observed that there became a CEO of one of those companies who did have an Apple II when he was younger. So we now see a, a, see ch a change coming in the leadership of these companies where they have uh, perhaps grown up with technology. So how do we see the leadership of corporations and government in Asia in how they how they see technology. And I'll ask a very simple question. Does the CEO of your organization use email? Or Facebook. M mine or, does. Or <laughs> what, email, Facebook, or Twitter? Or are yeah. they social? Twitter, yeah. So any, yeah. Well, uh, our uh, ex-minister uses the internet, and uh, uh, of course, uh, in the government, especially in Japan, uh, their background is laws and economics, so not, not uh, a te technical background. Uh, but uh, it is very important to uh, uh, contact with people, so massive people, uh, even in the government. So uh, in order to make the best u usage of the technology, uh, rules and regulations are very important, and we, we, we have to change our uh, style well, uh, our way of life to make the best usage of uh, the technology. Yeah. So, 
even the CIO and the top management. And the is, CEO yes. as well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Exactly the same. Any other comments here? We, we, we might imagine that most CEOs of most large companies in Asia do not use email. Yeah. I'm, I'm making this up, but I want to see what, how you react to this. Don't use email and don't use Twitter, don't use Facebook. Right? Are you agreeing on this? I'm not so sure. Not. Another bottleneck, perhaps. I'm, no? You don't I'm think so? I'm not so sure. I mean, I'm, you know, um, you know I, I guess we work with a lot of partners across the region. Um, and I think, you know, from, from the top down, we see an incredible, you know, and particularly in emerging, you know, in, in emerging markets, uh, you know, from, from the top down, this, this really sort of, you know, keen um, uh, determination to actually get users where they are. And, you know, users where they are, they are, are here, in cyber cafes, you know, and, and operating in, in a social, oh, sorry, in a social world. So, you know, it, it is very much um, trying to go after the users um, mm. and, and the consumers and, and figuring out sort of, you know, where, where you can reach them, both from an advertising side or, or selling them services side. So and that's increasingly digital. So you're not as gloomy here? So yeah. You think, you think that executive CEOs are... Slowly moving up. Ab yeah. Absolutely, because yeah. because the consumers are forcing them to. I mean, that's where that's where the, the activity is, right. and you only have to watch your kids. This is society. <laughs> what? Go ahead. Yes, I give you the example of China Mobile. China Mobile yeah. is a large company in Asia, of course, and we have uh, half a million employees, and we cover 98 percent of population for our network. And uh, we have no other choice for the ordinary uh, business work. We have to use network. So the total office process is uh, network-based. Uh, we try to uh, create an envir environment of uh, office for paperless. And so uh, all, all, all employees, all leaders, all that are young, they use computer, they use mobile phone, they use tablets. It has become very, very popular. And this starts from the top with you, and you're pushing this, that everyone should do this. That's true. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So how about the, the view from India, maybe? Yeah. Uh, according to my experience, of course, the CIOs in India are, are of course, enabled uh, with technology and connected. But um, I feel the setback with those CIOs is that, uh, of course, the management is not very supportive because the management sometimes mistakes the CIOs to be the procurement officers. Yeah. So like, it's very unfortunate that they don't understand the CIO is actually the part of the management, and, and it is very, very important that the CIOs are involved in the strategic decision-making of the organization. So um, I've seen managements who approach the CIOs only when their CRM or their ERP system fails, and, of course, you need the CIO to fix it. So uh, I feel that it has, to be, uh, it has to be initiated from the management where they understand that the CEO is not only a procurement officer, but he is, he is actually the part of the management, and he has to be involved in the strategic decision making. So more, more enlightenment is needed. More enlightenment, enlightenment is needed. Right. Yeah, okay. So let's, let's, I'm going to do a quick uh, uh, round the horn here. Um, can, you can each of you name a company in your country or maybe any Asian country, that you think is, is best using digital as an example, an amazing example of using digital well. So an example in the U.S. would be Amazon as an example. Amazon has used digital to now become the dominant retailer in the United States. What would be, what would be your one example of companies in Asia? I mean, I've, I've got an example, and it just kind of shows you, I guess, what, what's possible. It's, it's a, a bank in Australia called Ubank. And it's a bank without a branch. So it doesn't have a branch at all. Um, it only has online um, uh, customer support 24-7 through Skype and through the phone. Where online. is it based? Which country? In Australia. In Australia, yeah. And it, after three years, it has 100,000 customers. It's the 12th largest retail deposit bank in Australia um, with no physical presence. You know, that's pretty extraordinary in terms of you, know, you look at... at the physical infrastructure that most banks have, and you know your ability to sort of bypass that is is pretty is pretty wild. Good example. Other ones. Uh, yeah. I think yes. HTC, HTC in Taiwan would be a great digital company example My because HTC. yeah, yeah HTC phone. <laughs> Actually, you know they started to produce phones just three years ago, four years ago, mm. and now they their market cap is more than Nokia. 
right? right. And the, uh, you know, the revolutionized process of manufacturing phones. And the, you know, but the legacy phone manufacturers cannot catch, keep up with their speed. So, well, I, I think HTC. But a, a, a company using digital to move very to quickly. move very fast, yeah. as a, in terms of manufacturing phones. Yeah. Any other examples? Yeah. Yeah. I so. mean, in India, I could uh, I could immediately think of a website called MakeMyTrip.com, which is a travel portal. Because, uh, uh, like, I, I can imagine. Uh, all those years where my dad was very hesitant to use his credit card online because he was like he had of course he had apprehensions to use uh, of course of course use e-commerce for transactions. But uh, when Make My Trip started to uh, like it started to uh, actually started to enable the Indian consumers to book their uh, to book their flights or trains online. I think I think it has really like it has really opened up opportunities for uh, for e-commerce companies in India because it itself set as a benchmark and and for apart from the Indian consumers it has it has also encouraged entrepreneurship so uh, probably somebody in a village uh, who has access to the internet connectivity so he's invested on one laptop and he has got internet connectivity so he himself is is acting as uh, like uh, acting as this agent for MakeMyTrip.com. So like uh, all the villagers who have no access to connectivity, but if they want to book flight tickets or bus tickets, he acts as the agent. So uh, good example. Yeah. Yeah. I think it other, others. Anywhere. Well, uh, it is very difficult to name the one country from the uh, viewpoint of the government. But one example mm -hmm. is Rakuten, I suppose. That's uh, uh, top sh uh, who had the top share in the e-commerce in Japan. And uh, uh, the founder of Rakuten is Mr. Mikitani, and he's very famous for uh, uh, because uh, he introduced uh, formal language in the company, English, mm. oh, yeah. so not Japanese. So uh, it is very difficult for us Japanese to make the best uh, use of internet because uh, uh, you, well, you have to uh, use English, not Japanese. So Japanese is isolated language. So well, this is interesting though. You said because he used English as his language, that enabled him to be more digital. Yeah, the I company suppose. to be more digital. Yeah, that's, did they get that right? That's, yeah, uh, that's right. Yeah. We can connect all over the world in English, but yeah. it is very difficult for us to make the, for example, Facebook to connect the English or the United States. So, well. One example is uh, Rakuten. The, the formal language is uh, English. Mm -hmm. So, good example. No? So, you can't use your own your own company as an example. <laughs> no, you can't do that. No, no, I, I, no. So, so, so many examples for that, uh, and uh, because many, many company, even some some sector, some industry are based on the network, based on digital technology. So I don't name a specific uh, company. I just give you an example in, in China. That is network shopping. Network shopping now uh, is very popular in China. Mm. Uh, many young people, they don't go to malls, they don't go to markets, just uh, buy anything uh, on network. And I didn't understand. Uh, I asked one of my young employees why you buy something for just from uh, network. He told, he told me if I buy a shirt, I need to pay for, from the shoe market. I need to pay 500 yuan. But if we buy, buy the same same shirt on network, only 300 yeah, yuan. Yeah. That's yeah. the reason. Yeah. Okay. So it's not a company, but a sector. Yeah. So I'm going to take a veer here, just a quick, uh, a fast question um, uh, for Tetsuo. Uh, uh, in, the, in the tsunami crisis, how was digital used during the crisis, and what lessons did you learn about digital in that crisis? Okay. Uh, taking this opportunity, first I would like to express our uh, sincere uh, appreciation for the support and the condolence from all over the world. And uh, at that time, uh, mobile phones and the fixed phones are not available because of the traffic is too large. But uh, we can use internet, we can use Twitter, and uh, uh, in order to get uh, very detailed information, uh, these kind of me uh, measures were very had uh, played a very very important role whereabouts 
and where to uh, where you can uh, go and uh, where is the uh, risk where is the uh, safe uh, place and where you can get food. So the technology that was being used was Twitter mainly? Yeah, that is very important. So Twitter was the critical technology for you? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I agree with yeah. that. Yeah. You know, so, uh, three, three years ago, there was a very big uh, earthquake in Sichuan province, and uh, we found when people retreated from a building, the first thing is to take their mobile phone, phone to yeah. try to get information, try to give information to their family members. Yeah. 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 yeah I mean, yeah. What, sorry. Okay. What, what we found in, in Japan was we launched Person Finder in, in Japan mm. to to you know have people sort of you know log where they were you know again using the internet because people were were not sure you know couldn't get hold of, of uh, friends and w one of the things that that um, a lot of our our users did was actually take take photographs of of the, the lists you know of people in in various shelters uh. upload them onto Picasa and then volunteers would essentially turn that into you know digital name files that we could upload yeah. Yeah. which was extraordinary I mean you know you, yeah. you use the technology that you have yes. every information from the refugees are integrated to the Google and it was it well it uh, well really uh, played a great role I suppose yeah, so Twitter Google and the uh, very f funny, uh, different perspective I found was nuclear plant accident, actually. You know, after the nuclear plant accident, so many people started to learn nuclear things, yeah, yeah. actually, <laughs> by, by net, internet. And the, now in Japan, many experts on nuclear plant are existing there. <laughs> and you know, by using net, you can learn a lot and sometimes you know you can you can know much better than the specialist, yeah. at least than government yeah. government officials. So so many amateur professionals, amateur professionals about the nuclear plants are now existing in Japan. Right. That's a very funny interesting. Yeah. Okay, so let's turn out to consumers. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of boring data here from Forrester, but I think it may set the stage for us. Um, Forrester believes that tech spending in Asia will grow approximately 14% in 2011 to around $500 billion. However, we are forecasting that in 2012, tech spending in Asia will drop to 6%. That's a major drop from 14% to 6%. Uh, so we believe that tech spending will be dropping here. Now, let's turn to consumers. If you look at PC adoption, 90% of adults in metro China now have a personal computer, and 36% of adults in metro India have personal computers, and the, both of these numbers are up significantly in 2011. Uh, online, 88% of metro Chinese now use the internet at least monthly, up 13% from 2010, and 34% of adults in metro India are now using uh, the internet, are now online monthly, that's up 9%. And then the last is the fastest growth is in mobile internet usage. 45% uh, of Metro Chinese are online via a mobile device at least monthly. Uh, that's up 21% from 2010. And 11% of Metro Indians access the mobile net monthly up from just 1% in 2010. So fastest growth now is in India. Japan saw the biggest jump in mobile internet usage as now 57% of adults now have access and that's up 24% uh, from last year. So we see growth in PC, we see growth in online, and we see the fastest growth in mobile usage. Um, so I want to ask the, the entire group uh, the question. Um, as we look forward over the next two to three years, what is the one change in consumer behavior that you think will be most evident? most important, the one change that we will see. Let's, let's lengthen this out, maybe not two to three years, let's say the next one to five years. How will the consumer change most, what will be the, the, the major consumer change that you'll see? You're at Google, so you gotta yeah. go first. No, I, I, I think that the thing for me is, is um, that, that you know, the next 
100 million users coming onto the internet in, in Asia are going to primarily be accessing first on mobile. And it may be only on mobile. Um, you know, it may be that they don't migrate to PC because you know, as these devices get better and better and smarter and smarter and they're mobile, then I need a PCY. Okay, I need so, a so, you're, y. so you're saying the next big change is no PCs? Well, I, I think the next big change is really the primary access point for, for the internet is really going to be mobile. So it moves from PC to mobile. Great one. Others? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think a touch panel would be really widely used in everywhere. You know, my kids, three years old daughter, is always thinking, you know, every, all the display should be a touch panel. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. now she's touching <laughs> all the screen. T TV screen saying, you know, don't move, don't move, why? <laughs> like that. So yeah, touch and, and of course, Windows 8 is touch. Yeah. So, so yeah. all the PCs, smartphones, and the tablets, everything would be touch based. So move away from PC, moving to touch. Any other ideas? Sure. I feel in India, I think the future would be would certainly be in the mobile, by which uh, I feel the financial inclusion and the inclusion for education would be through mobile itself to reach at the bottom of the pyramid or the bottom of the billions. So uh, I think within the next five years, uh, we, may not see, we may not see many number of ATM machines, but uh, I think the ATM machines would actually be replaced with mobile phones. So, so increasing mobile deeper into the population. Right. Yeah. Others? That's I, I dare to point out the negative side. Well, maybe uh, all of the people uh, fa will face the privacy problem. Yeah. yeah. So what does that mean, the privacy well, problem? Well, for example, the uh, convergence of technology. Uh, for example, GPS and the mobile phones. <laughs> well, you can specialize uh, uh, where is the people now and well, what is uh, people is doing now? So, uh, of course, uh, some people uh, can use it very uh, appropriate manner, but uh, uh, there is uh, many uh, people who is uh, elder and uh, digital divide, and um, who is not so uh, good at uh, using this kind of uh, cutting edge technology. So, uh, some people uh, are. Um, uh, uh, because some people uh, doesn't uh, doesn't want to know where where they are, right? but uh, everyone uh, has a possibility to know wh uh, what what they are doing now. So let, let me ask you a question about privacy. Do you think that Asians will be more possessive of their privacy than Europeans or Americans or others? Well, uh, will, will there, there be a different is no difference with, between the uh, Asians and the Europeans, I suppose, but because I know, the, for example, in the UK, the privacy problem is a oh, oh, uh, uh, very important problem as well, and we, we are discussing about the internet, that kind of problem, but, uh, no, well, no, I don't think that there, there's no difference between Asia and Asia. So you don't think any difference? Yeah. yeah so, Chin Sao. Yeah, I will yeah. answer your... Uh, Original question yes, good, yeah, about uh, the trends. Uh, I think uh, we will have more application for mobile use, and uh, you know we try to uh, have a ubiquitous network. How to realize? How to make uh, it ubiquitous? I think wireless is a very good solution to do that. And uh, you know, I suppose uh, today here in in in, in this this, this uh, room. Some of people are using mobile phone to have a live broadcasting for the situation of this meeting. But now, you know, they use the the micro micro blog style technology. And but today, they just to have some text and picture transmission simultaneous. But I think in the, for the next generation of mobile technology, we call it LTE, people can use their mobile phone to have a video transmitting simultaneously. Real time. Yeah, real yeah, time. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, so, uh, so more mobile. Um, the, a, kind of an amazing statistic from Forrester. We say in Indonesia and the Philippines are the fourth and sixth largest Facebook users 
uh, users in the world. Um, and this is uh, uh, for you, Jin Zhao. Um, uh, how pervasive will social computing become in Asia? When I say social, we think of it primitively today as Twitter, Facebook, et cetera. How, how pervasive will it be in Asia? Yeah. Uh, yes, of course. We didn't expect uh, it is so popular in China. You know, in China, there are many SNS, for, for example, uh, I mentioned before the micro blog. It, it is uh, Twitter similar uh, application, and uh, so many people are using that. Uh, even for these summer hours, I think this is the uh, first uh, uh, World Economic uh, uh, New cham Championship uh, meeting here, and uh, it the content are. Uh, uh, transmitted so fast right. at the same time, and uh, you you just uh, g give a speech, and at the same time, many many people know that uh, from mobile phone, yeah. from micro blog, and uh, I don't know the exact data. Maybe more than 200 million people are using uh, micro blog, and uh, also we we have some chatting, you know, QQ. Tencent charting, mm. it, it, it is a very popular. And uh, I think it, it, we also have a very uh, similar uh, program la, la, like Facebook, uh, that's Ren Ren. Right. And yeah. it is also very popular. Yeah. I, I, I so this trend we think is unstoppable, rising, yeah. rising fast. Right. Everyone, right. No, one, no one's disagreeing with this, I don't think, right? Mm, no. Yeah, okay. <laughs> no uh, let's, take, let's take a question from the audience. Yeah, right here. Uh, hi, I'm Aaron Back from Dow Jones. Uh, I wanted to ask about what I think is sort of an elephant in the living room here, which is the role of government controls in uh, Asia, and particularly China. If we're talking about whether Asia can lead the world in being digital, some of the technologies that we're name-checking in this conversation, like Twitter and Facebook, are not available where we're sitting. Yeah. So is that irrelevant? Um, China has its own local champions that are flourishing, as Chairman Wong just mentioned. So is it merely irrelevant that there are these controls in this market? Yeah, so you, you jumped ahead. That, that was my next on my agenda, but let's, let, let's take it now. I think it's good. Um, <laughs> government, government and digital, government and social. Um, let's open it up. Anyone, Takeshi? It's a really difficult, disputable you know, topic, but they are, you know, uh, 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 before going to China issue, you know, uh, I, I can take up an uh, uh, example of uh, Japan. Actually, you know, uh, Japan was far ahead of, you know, mobile technology, actually, you know, uh, ho almost all the phones, all the phones can be access accessible to the internet, but the, uh, Actually, you know, back to four years ago, you know, government intervened to the business model of operators, actually. And the, after that, you know, innovation, the speed of innovation was slowed down. Mm. But the, I, I'm not sure if this, is, if this was bad or good, because, you know, by, by taking the operator's power down, then, you know, there were opportunities for newcomers to jump in, especially, you know, uh, Foreign companies like Google and the other 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 internet players came into the telecom industry. So uh, you know, uh, I, I cannot say you know the government intervention would be bad, but the you know uh, the balance would be really really delicate. And but, at least you know the government officials and the, you know private sectors have to understand the you know pros and cons of government intervention. And I, I'm not sure China, you know, but because of China firewall, you know, so many Chinese companies are now doing uh, lots of variety of services, actually. And it, 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 sometimes, you know, it's far advanced than the global service. So I'm going to pin you down here. Do you think there should be more government involvement in digital or less government involvement? In I prefer less, but the, no. you know, uh, sometimes, you know, the Internet ecosystem can adopt any kind of government intervention into their ecosystem and you know, some newcomers would generate something new. So if the government were to intervene, the internet may go around them. Exactly, anyway. exactly. Okay, what about in India, Swar? 
Of course, in India, the government intervention in terms of uh, uh, in terms of uh, actually the internet is extremely very minimal. So, uh, uh, in fact, government itself uh, has actually started to adopt uh, Twitter and Facebook to address the citizens' concerns. So, like, it makes it more social. So, as a citizen, if I have a concern, I can go onto the Facebook fan page of probably of a ministry and I can express my concerns. So. I think that so they're uh, enabling more internet. Yeah, I think yeah. that yeah. yeah. I think government should not act as the, um, act as a barrier, but they need to start adopting digital and, and started to engage the users as well. Okay. Cool. I mean, I, I, I agree sure. with with what Sir has said. I mean, es essentially, um, you know, there are you know any time there are barriers towards um, you know. Uh, allowing the, the internet to sort of you know work as an interoperable platform around the world, there are issues, right? And and you know whether it's it's as simple as as requiring a data centre in in a particular country. I know that that you know in in India, uh, RIM had a lot of difficulties in India and in Indonesia in terms of you know requiring um, RIM to ha actually have a data centre in those places. So. You know, again, it doesn't it doesn't help when when you have sort of artificial barriers to to you know stop stop the internet really operating on an, on a sort of global basis. So less government, less government, less government. Getting well. to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from my perspective, because we we are uh, operators and uh, we we have our requirements, uh, you know the. The operation is changing, and we are facing very new things. For example, convergence. Now, you know, we have a lot of convergence examples. So, for, for, for example, when do mobile TV, mobile newspaper, that is telecom plus media. And when we do pay, mobile payment, that is telecom plus finance. And when we do mobile games, mobile music, that means telecom plus entertainment. And for electronic reading, that's telecom plus publishing. And so we need a new spec specification. We need a new rules because it is not only a specific sector can finish all jobs. So we hope the government will issue some new rules, new policies to support those convergence. That's in my perspective. So when you say new laws, you mean less laws, less, less regulation, do you think? Or different regulation? Because it is very new. We need to have new regulation. Yeah, I okay. Mean. Yeah. yeah, okay. That's it. Yeah. Hopefully less. Uh, because uh, in order to make the best usage of the internet or a new technology, uh, sharing ideas uh, is very important, and uh, sharing knowledge is very important. And, uh, but uh, there is uh, uh, so many problems that we have to deal with, uh, uh, privacy or uh, the cyber attack or IPL. Uh, well, so uh, every country has uh, uh, their rules and regulations, and the respect of law is a very important point. So it is uh, somewhat incompatible uh, demand, but uh, we need uh, uh, some kind of golden harmony between uh, the, those two. Yeah, someone asked a question I think, about balance. So what you're saying, Tetsu, is about the government is, yeah, should be involved here to balance. Yeah, sir. If I may add an observation here, yeah. uh, because of this internet regulation actually in mainland, I see that it has also encouraged entrepreneurship because for the fact that you got like you got uh, like hundreds of local entrepreneurs uh, who started to build their own versions of Facebook or Twitter or like even the YouTube here, and uh, and in a, and in terms of its uh, actually its user base, it is it is almost equivalent to those user base in the Western countries. So. Uh, like a one way, it is an advantage to the local entrepreneurs because they see it as an opportunity. So as soon as the firewall is introducing the new website to be blocked, so you have an entrepreneur who opens its local version here. So, so creating more entrepreneurship almost. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Another question from the audience. Uh, yeah, right here. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have been talking about the uh, consumer or the demand side of the technology. 
I would like to um, hear some discussions on the supply side of it. And um, my question is whether Asia will become the most competi competitive in the supply side of this. Uh, will that surpass that of America? Asia is abundant in a very um, talented labor, and that's very important for the, um, for the supply side of the uh, digital technology. So th this is where I was going next. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to ask it in this way. Could Steve Jobs have grown up in India or China? No. And come out of India and China? Why? No. The, uh, the issue is, you know, we are talking about Asia. But the Asian market is so fragmented, right? So uh, in China, you know, so many Chinese companies are powerful, but they only in China, right? They cannot go global. And in Japan as well, you know, uh, the market size of Japan is really small, but it's small enough for several companies, right? And the Indonesia, very different. So uh, each market. Yeah, but, is, chi but China's not a frag. China's a very large, unfragmented uh, market. Yeah, so. I, <laughs> only in, even only in China, you know, you can be big enough. So, uh, and the, you know, uh, the liquidity of money on the human resources would be limited into one country. Yeah. But in U.S. case, you know, you can get all the talent all, all from all over the world, like Google, right? My ex-staff is working for Google, <laughs> so many people. Wait, wait, so you're saying we couldn't have Steve Jobs in Asia because not enough money. What else? <coughs> what, mean, are the, uh, what are the reasons? Uh, I mean, uh, the base, uh, base market for humans and the money, capital, would be limited into one country. Limited. Oh, you could do fragmented, yeah. yeah. Other um, comments here. Why can't Steve Jobs come out of Asia? Yeah. Because of the ecosystem itself. Because in India, even now, actually, when I started my company, I couldn't find an investor or I couldn't even find a partner. So uh, I think the ecosystem is actually missing in India. So if you, if you look at Silicon Valley, you have the ecosystem of the yeah. academia, which that's the Stanford University, or access to the university is access to research centers, next access to the, uh, access to the venture capitalists or investors. So. Um, I strongly feel that the ecosystem was missing, but like how Steve Jobs had been to India for his yoga classes, but unfortunately it was not for his research. So, e so we're missing ecosystem, we're mi it's too fragmented, not enough money. Other comments? I mean, I'd sort of turn it, turn it around a bit, and, and I guess, I mean, you know, my sort of perspective is that, that n number one, things are changing so fast. Yeah. Um, you know, when, you know, as you were saying, th three years ago, HTC didn't make mobile phones, right? Nokia was, was king of the hill. You know, that changed actually very, very fast. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't you know, preclude anything. Um, you know, I think also the, the advantage of actually coming out of Asia is it's really hard, <laughs> you know, that, that operating in, in you, know, uh, you know, India or Indonesia with, with limited, um, you know, um, resources and, you know, very low, you know, revenue per user, you know, it, it's, it's tough. But if you manage to do it, there's, you know, why can't you launch that model in Africa or Latin America or, or actually at, at a sort of, you know, at the low end market in, in developed markets? So my, you know, I'm a great believer in sort of bottom of the pyramid. Um, I, I do think that the power of innovation around business models, you know, you look at the online games market in China. I mean, that was driven by the fact that, that you know, you couldn't protect intellectual property around, around you know, PlayStation games and console games. Um, but, you know, they innovated to say, well, why can't we have an online system where, you know, the, the revenue is actually generated by selling items in games where, you know, the, the cost is, is, is kind of zero in delivering that. So you think Steve, Steve Jobs could come out of Asia? That yes. Happen. Okay, Chinsa. My answer is yes. We can <laughs> have our Steve Jobs. <laughs> because, you know, in China, in Asia, we have very, very large market and big market demands. We have enough money to support that. So many capital now are in Asia, in China. We have a lot of talents, so why don't we can have uh, some innovation? And I think there is a, for our industry, there is an opportunity. When we talk about 3G, people say, what is 3G? 3G is smartphone, our consumer said. But now, 4G is coming. 
Uh, when I visited the United States, Verizon now uh, already launched the 4G LTE technology. But some American customer asked uh, the question, what is 4G? What is different uh, between 3G and 4G? It's very difficult to answer that question. So we need uh, the same question in China, yep. in Asia. So what we need today is to, to create, to invent a new device to tell our people that is 4G, and we need our Steve Jobs. Right. <laughs> now, I, I'm, gonna make, I'm not supposed to be the facilitator, but I'm gonna, I'll make a statement here that I think the major issue why we may not see Steve Jobs for a while is cultural, but that's another hour that we could spend on that, which we're not gonna do today. So we only have five minutes left. Um, you know, it feels like we've been here for minutes because this has been so, such an interesting topic. Um, but I want each of you to give um, one piece of advice for everyone in this room about how to navigate the next five years of digital transformation in Asia. Maybe it's not advice, maybe it's, maybe it's your one observation as to what will happen in the next five years in Asia, in digital. I, 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 I think, uh, you know, some of the applications, digital applications in Asia is far advanced uh, compared to the U.S. and the, uh, you know, Europe, especially like uh, e-money, electric money. Yeah. You know, in Hong Kong, Singapore, and in Japan, you know, majority of the people are using e-money. And this is really convenient. So, um, but the, because of the fragmentation of the you know, market and because of many things, you know, it's not global yet. But the, you know, the, maybe within five years, we're gonna find out something global application from Asia. So you think e-money, in fact, e -money may start, is a may kind start of here and go around e exactly, to the rest of the world. Exactly. It, the, great, excellent observation. Other observations. You know, for me, it's mobile first. Um, that that you know, a number of the innovations we, we've we've launched have actually be, been mobile first. You know, so so we brought in voice search to to the phone um, because it's you know, particularly if you're sitting in the back of a taxi in India, it's hard to type. Um, and so you know, if you're searching for something, why not be able to sort of you know speak it in? We we actually have now moved that over to the desktop. Um, but it was essentially a you know, mobile application first. So I think, you know, particularly in Asia, think about you know, how you solve problems on mobile first. So stay centered on, on mobile. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Well, uh, uh, te digital technology have the possibility to uh, mitigate uh, digital divide in Asia. Uh, for example, uh, the mobile phone, the penetration rate of the mobile phone is very fast uh, compared with the fixed phone. Well, uh, of course, we can use it, uh, we can set, set it uh, very easily. So, and the uh, uh, investment cost is uh, not so large. So, uh, uh, they can um, mitigate the digital divide in Asia. That is very important. So, we will see the digital course. divide mitigated by more. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, good. So, I feel in the next five years, we would see, like, we would see more e-commerce transactions, especially in an emerging country like India. Which was which was very conservative about uh, about the usage of online payments, and and at the same time, I think internet would be more local. So currently, it's more international. So you've got more international content. So uh, probably to search restaurants or to or to access to your local information, I think like you'd see more users using the internet for your local purpose. So in the rural environments, access to local. Yeah, yeah, Jinsen. Uh, very, very quick answer. Uh, uh, we, I think in Asia we have a lot of things in common with other places, uh, but uh, we have our unique characteristics. We have our unique ad advantages and opportunities. And for example, the application of mobile phone. In Asia, people like to use mobile phone for games. It, it is different from other places. So we need to use those kind of new opportunities. And I hope the vendors, the deve soft, 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 software developers, the operators, and the consumers can make more contributions to build a digital Asia in the future. Excellent. So I'm sorry we didn't get to more questions. This is a massive topic, which we had a, a lot of very uh, valuable thoughts from everyone 
on the panel. Thank you all for coming. So I, I want to thank uh, Jin Sao. Thank you for being here. Much Tatsu. Thank you very much. Michelle. Excellent. Takeshi. Takeshi thank you very much. Sarah. Thank you very much. So thank you to this panel. Excellent. <laughs>